Today, I gave a presentation at the Southern California Conference of Undergraduate Research, along with my partner Cameron. Our topic was generative design. Now, what is generative design? Essentially, it's where you give a computer-aided design program various inputs, such as forces and volumetric constraints. With these constraints, the program will then create an organic structure in order to accomplish the goal required. Now, that might sound a bit complex, but really it's pretty straightforward. When you have an object or a structure, and you want to take it and make it just as strong, if not stronger than it already is, yet as light as possible while still meeting those strength requirements. A good example of this is the L bracket that we place on our poster. First, we take a traditional looking L bracket and model this in our program. In this case, we're using Autodesk Fusion 360. We then highlight the geometry that we want to keep, in this case, the L of the bracket, and we get rid of the geometry that we don't want to keep. This cross member right here, it's great, it works perfect. But what if we could make something just as strong, if not stronger, yet as light as humanly possible? Well, it would take forever and a day for us to sit down and try to figure all of that out on our own. However, the computer can do this no problem. And depending on the complexity, it'll take anywhere from a couple hours to eh, who knows how long. But the point is, it's a lot faster than a human. With conventional design and manufacturing techniques, we are very limited in what we can produce. For example, when you see structures such as bridges or car roll cages or anything of that sort, you oftentimes see this space frame like shape. However, all of the edges are sharp and there are little to no curves within these types of structures. This is largely due to our ability to manufacture different curves. Take a look at a car roll cage. Different tubing pieces can be bent, but as far as changing diameters of tubing, you don't see that a whole lot. And most of the tubing that you see in roll cages is circular. It's sometimes square or rectangular, sometimes oval, but you don't have a lot of these organic shapes. Now, it's not that looking organic is the end all be all just because it's attractive. It's much more than that. When you have square joints and perfectly even structures with uneven forces, Inherently, you will have areas of high stress and areas of low stress. But you can't compensate for that because the tube or the beam is the same size or diameter or thickness all the way throughout. Of course, with some exceptions, but you get the idea. This is where generative design stands out. Within given constraints, the program will automatically try multiple different variations of the same structure ultimately accomplishing the same goal, and that's meeting that minimum factor of safety. When it does so, it automatically takes in the forces that you've applied and figures out areas where stress is high versus where stress is low. The program then shifts material from low stress zones into high stress zones to give them reinforcement. Basically what this does is takes away material where it doesn't need it and adds material where it does. I mean, we could never do this this accurately and this finite. Programs such as Fusion 360 take care of all of these hard equations that really it's not realistic for us to attempt. While generative design is fairly new and still being explored, there are quite a few different ways to utilize this technology. For example, multiple different materials can be selected when choosing how the part is modeled. For our test runs, we use a few of their sample additive materials such as aluminum, titanium, and stainless steel because all of these materials can be used in additive manufacturing or 3D printing. Typically when we think of 3D printing we think of plastic and PLA and such but more and more we're seeing metal 3D printers. I know sounds crazy but it's the future and generative design is one way that we can harness the full capabilities of additive manufacturing using metals. Another variation in which you can use this program is the end goal which it strives for when creating a structure. For example, all of the geometries that we have created so far have been done with the goal of low mass in mind. However, maximizing strength is also one of the options. Additionally, the factor of safety used when calculating stresses can also be adjusted. It defaults to two, which we usually keep it there, but adjusting this can be very handy. My fellow students and I 
gave these presentations today on behalf of our schools, in my case, Cal State Fullerton, and we did so to share our information learned when researching these various studies. Our goal initially was to find a lighter and better version of this simple skateboard truck, and doing so really opened our eyes to the world of generative design and additive manufacturing. It's truly limitless. All the traditional constraints with traditional machining or casting, even five axis machining, those are being blown away by generative design and additive manufacturing. We are still a ways out from mass production using additive manufacturing, especially with metals. But right now it certainly has its purpose regarding prototyping and experimentation. And we will definitely see a rise of these unconventional manufacturing and designing techniques used in the future.